So before moving on and showing the new releases in the view, I want to make one little change. Eventually we'll have three stores. We've got this one, we'll have the list of releases, and we'll make another call to get details on a given release. And all of those will share that configuration. So what I'd like to do is to consolidate that. And the way to do it is this Ajax proxy, let me go to the API docs, and I already looked it up. This is the class that handles those Ajax proxy requests. And in the docs, it shows that there are events that it fires. So there's an event called before request and request exception. And I'm going to use those. So let's go back to the code. Now, where do we actually get the token? We get it inside of Authenticate. So I'm going to add a couple of statements here. I'm going to say, hey, Oops. Hey, Ajax object. When an event is fired, so in um, XReact, many components fire events, and they're, the generic term is they're observable. And any observable object in XReact has this on method. So we're basically saying, hey, when this event occurs, run this function. And the function, if we looked in the docs, we would have seen that it passes two properties, and we're interested in options. So options is that, that configuration that we were doing before over in app.js. So what we want to say is take that options object and overlay it with what? We're going to overlay it with these properties. So if I come back over here now, and I just did a copy and paste. So let me proofread here. We're saying before any request occurs, I want to take the set of configuration options and overlay it with these two values, and then go ahead and make the call. We can also just, so we know this is being run, and I'm going to just log the name of the event. Okay, so let's look at our running app. Hopefully I don't have any typos. And what we should see, can I read, oh yeah, so what I did wrong is I just copied and pasted blindly, but that's not where the token is here. The token is in this property here. So let me uh, replace that, try it again, there. So we hit our event handler, and if we look at network traffic, we really did get the new releases. That's great. Now there is one other event that gets fired, and that is request exception. So the idea here is our token could get um, out of date. The token only is um, active for, and I don't even know the time, let's say it's 30 minutes. So after a while, that token is no longer valid. Even though it's up in the URL, the token is no longer good. And we get, you know, we get whatever the error is that's returned by Spotify in that case. You know, it's a 400 or a 500 error of some kind. So what we'd like to do is we'd say, like to say, hey, Ajax, we're going to do something really similar. So I'm going to say, hey, when, when there's an exception, what do we want to do? And in this case, all we want to do is run this method we already have. All right, so this is nice. So that means if that token gets out of date, let, let's say, you know, we just run the app and wait till the next day and refresh our page and all of a sudden we get an error, right? That might happen because the token is, you know, um, expired. So this will detect that error and it'll ask for a new token. All right, so let me just make sure this still runs. And it is, and now we're ready to move on and um, code the view. So now when we have loaded data into our store, how can we display it in our application? What component should we use? Well, let me go over to the API docs. And there's a component 
that's suitable for showing thumbnails, and it's called a data view. So I'll do a search here. And if you look in the example, basically a data view renders an HTML snippet for every record in a store. And we can define this snippet by ourselves. Right. So what I'll do is I'm just going to copy this. Without extract. Oh yes, <laughs> without extract, good point. These samples are just sort of little standalone examples and we've already put that into our index.js, so right, I don't need that. So I'll copy this, go to um, app.js. We don't really need that foo panel anymore, so I'll just get rid of that entirely. We also don't need a title on here. And if we look at this, there's the template it will render for every record. Our data actually does have a property called name, so this will show that property from the record, but our data doesn't have this other data. So I'll like go ahead. Age. And, exactly. So I'll and delete we that. Need, we need to rename store. Uh, because we used new releases as a name for our store. Right, so I'll go ahead and put that there, and then that's just some junk that I accidentally typed on the end. Okay, I'm just reading this. It looks fine to me. Let's look at the running app. And there we go. We're seeing all the titles. Looks well, good, but maybe we can add also thumbnails to these titles. Right, so if we look at the feed, if you recall, Inside of here, there's a property called images, and those are the thumbnail images. And uh, there is uh, images for um, with three sizes, and we can use middle size image, uh, three uh, hundred pixel image, and just take URL and uh, use image element in for our snippet. Right. So what I'd like to do, I mean, the objective here is that I'd like to say something like image. Whoops, source equals, right? And then that would have the URL. But the problem is the URL, that image element is kind of nested down inside the data feed. So it's like first uh, element in uh, images array in the data feed. Right, so that's a little awkward to reference. So what we can do is stores have a way for you to map a field in your record with how it's, um, where it's found actually inside the feed. So the syntax for that is I can come up here and say fields. So it's an array because we could have any number of these. And I want to call this um, image. And then the property is called mapping. And then this is where it is in the feed. And I guess we just saw that it's an images subscript one is what we want. And now down in here, I can use that name. Image.url. Right, because this mapping is only for this whole element, and within there, there's a property called URL, and yes, that's what we want to show. And maybe we can put name uh, into a separate div element. Sure, okay, that's a good idea. So let's go ahead and say div, like that. So let's save and see how it looks. And... Strangely, it looks like nothing. Oh, there we go. That was just slow. I don't know why. Sorry, I just refreshed it just as I got the data. Let's wait a minute here. My internet must be slow all of a sudden. Okay, so here's the the thumbnail images for these, you know, this is the album art for those 25 things. But it looks like it's not scrollable. No, I'm trying to scroll here and it is not moving. Is it a way to tell our data view that it should scroll our data, our thumbnails? Yes, so if I go back into the API docs and we look at data view, actually I can filter on this, you know, we could look here and kind of read here and I can see there actually is a property called scrollable. But if you want to filter these properties on a specific thing, you can just come in here and start typing. So now if this is a more manageable list. So yeah, we want to just set scrollable to true. But to make uh, elements scrollable, we also need to set up height and uh, what is the way to do it in ext react yeah so the idea here is this data view is just an element inside of this container and as olga said it doesn't actually have a height specified yet so when you say scrollable true it's you know relative to what height so containers in ext react have this concept of a layout manager and a layout manager says how are the items arranged within the container and the simplest layout manager so let me show you the syntax I can just say layout, and the simplest one is called fit. And that just means 
take the one item in me and make it take up all the available space, have it fit within the container. Is it everything that we need to configure? Um, I think so. So let's, let's try, try it. All right. So now, yeah, now I can scroll and that's all working. Looks like really great, but maybe we can move this data view into a separate file. So like perform some refactoring. Yeah, our code. So basically we could code the whole, we could code the whole application this way and put everything inside of here. But after a while it would be hard to manage, right? So a good application is more modularized than that. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this code and put it into its own class. And then we'll also add some styling. So I'll go ahead and create a new folder. So I'm going to call this thumbnails. So there's a folder called thumbnails within it. I'll create a file called thumbnails.js. Right. And then this will be, um, let's see here. I think I have some shortcuts for this. So there's our new class thumbnails extends component as usual. And now this render will render our, you know, data, data. view that we so had So we before. need to copy and paste it here. Right. So what I'm going to do is let me copy a few things. Actually, I'll copy some of this boilerplate from the top. And let me think here. So I don't need that Well, here. So this is irrelevant. And we do need the thumbnail or the data view and we do need react. Now all we need is our content here. So this data view will be what we render. And we need to use this uh, thumbnails class into our upper pad JS file. And we need to import it, of course. Ah, it's already imported. Okay. So that's handy. All right. So a few points here. This will create our thumbnails, but right now the thumbnails, right, is referencing a store, but this store is not in the thumbnails class, right? We stored, we coded that over in the application, right? So we need to pass that in. And how can we do this? Well, typically you would just do it with an attribute. Just set up a prop for uh, instance of thumbnails class. Yeah. So here we're just going to pass that in. Mm -hmm. Oops. I need a curly bracket there. And then over in thumbnails, right here, I would say store equals. Now, right now it says this dot new releases. That's incorrect, but we need to do props uh, dot store, right? Oops. Like that. So let me think here. Have we done everything? So there's our store. This is the same as we had it before. I'm just kind of proofreading here. I guess we're ready to go. Our, let me just review here. This is still layout fit. And then the thumbnails class itself is still saying scrollable. Yeah, I think this should, should work. Right. So it looks the same, but now we're actually using separate classes. Maybe we can uh, improve styling of our thumbnails. Yeah, probably. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm just off in the debugger here. I'm just visually confirming. So I started to type command P to open up a resource. And I do see that there is a separate thumbnail.js, right? So that thumbnails class is being used. So that's good. Okay. So one small point here. What if we had to pass in multiple things to our data view? So over in app.js, we're using thumbnails sort of like a data view, right? We're passing in the store, but in the thumbnail, we had to duplicate that property setting. What if we were passing in two properties? Well, then we'd have to do it twice. What if we were passing in three properties? We'd have to do it three times. And there is a trick to avoid this. Right. There is a trick to avoid it. So let me make sure I get the syntax right. So basically in JavaScript, there's something called a spread operator and that'll take an object that's passed in and, you know, just copy it basically in the other location. So what I'm going to do on my data view here, I'm going to say curly bracket dot, 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 this dot props. So that's kind of a cool trick that says any prop that was passed into thumbnails will also be applied to the data view. We want to use it like a data view. So this is natural for us. And we can remove store uh, attribute. That's right. That means we don't need this at all anymore. So this is kind of a handy trick that comes up a lot in X react. 
All right, so let me make sure that runs. Okay, so it's still running. It doesn't look any different. So yeah, um, Olga just mentioned we ought to make this look a little bit nicer by adding some better styling. So um, this lecture is really not about SAS. So there's no point in you kind of watching me do a bunch of SAS typing. So for this styling, we've actually provided that file. So inside of that starter app, there's a folder called resources and we've already provided a thumbnails.scss so there's just a lot of SAS styling in there so what I'll do is I'll, I'm just gonna drag and drop and move that over here I am sure I want to move it yes I am so if you're curious you could look at this there's just some you know various styling in here there's a hover tag and what you'll see is when we hover over an item it'll kind of change its um, opacity and it'll make it a little bit bigger we'll kind of zoom in a little and bit and it will also add colors right so to take advantage of that we need better a better um snippet yeah a better item tpl here so again just so that you're not bored with me doing a bunch of typing we've also provided that so there's basically thumbnails.js let me see here this is the same source but we've added some detail so let me go here and paste it in so what's different in here first of all we're importing that you know styling then there's also a constructor we didn't really we still don't really need it but remember I like to do that debugging trick so that adds that inside of here we're saying the item template is now inside of a figure element right and now there's just a little bit more complicated styling in here that uses some of the classes defined over in that you know style sheet furthermore remember before we talked about layout managers now we're telling the data view that we want to use sort of a flex box layout with you know space around and we want wrapping turned on so I'm just reading here I guess that's about it so it's working basically the same it's just rendering this item TPL for every element but now it's also using some CSS classes that are defined inside of here and the results should look you know a lot nicer all right so let's see how that looks and there we go so let me make this a little bit bigger so the way the style sheet works is the album art is slightly blurred in this list but when you see an album you're interested in and hover over the album then it comes into sharp focus and gets a little bit bigger looks nice and maybe now we could display some uh, album details like list of tracks and so on right so that's the plan what we need to do is we need to detect when the user taps on one of these albums then we'll show a window of album details like tracks and things like that sounds like a good plan okay we'll do that next